Many video games have made the leap to tabletop play thanks to adaptations from designers and publishers, and I've been left on the sideline for most of those as I don't play video games. I prefer tabletop play, playing with actual people, with physical things that move around. It's just what I prefer, so I have almost no familiarity with the subject matters at hand, so I'm often just left with reading Wikipedia to figure out what something is. Ah, Metal Gear Solid is a video game. That's the extent of my knowledge on that topic. So I can't do much when talking about adaptations with certain titles, but thanks to a son who did play Minecraft for a few months, I can talk to a very small degree about the adaptation of Minecraft to Minecraft Builders and Biomes, a game by Ulrich Bloom and Ravensburger that will debut at Spiel 19 and be out in the US in November. So. The subject matter of Minecraft Builders and Biomes is very familiar to people who have already played lots of games. You're collecting resources, you're building things, you're fighting monsters. It's all very familiar subject matter. It's kind of interesting how that all works out. The resource gathering works in a very Minecraftian way, as of course are the creatures that you confront and the objects that you build. So let's take a look at that. Here are the components of Minecraft, builders and biomes. You are the builders. You're starting in the center of this grid, which is composed of 64 tiles. You randomize the tiles with four tiles in each stack laid out in this four by four grid. No matter the player count, two to four. You have weapons that are laid on the outside of the grid. You might spread these tiles a bit farther apart on your own table because you're moving the builders around in these spaces in between the grid. But for this video shot, I want to try to get everything in and show it as large as possible within the same shot. You have a four by four by four block of bricks. You have various resources available to you. The emeralds are wild. And then you have sand, wood, obsidian, and stone that you're going to use to build buildings that are on some of the tiles that you reveal during play. Each player has their own board upon which you will build with different biomes as different environments. Slightly different layouts, but they all functionally work the same. On a turn, you are going to do two of five actions. The actions available to you are shown in this card. You must choose different actions for your two choices. At the beginning of the game, you know nothing about the environment. You have no resources available to you. So you can't fight a mob and you can't collect a weapon because they're too far away. So you're left with only a few choices. You can't build either. So you can collect blocks. You can only collect blocks that are available, have a top surface that's available, and two sides available. So in the first turn, you can only get these four corners, but I can draft this one, and then I'll take a wood as well. Whatever you collect, you put in front of you, you have those resources available to you, and now I've exposed a few more cubes for other people to grab, including the ones on the bottom. Hmm, possibly I should not have taken that wood because now there's two jokers available. You set up the resources on this board that you can rotate so you can see everything available. Let's go back in time and pretend I didn't take that wood. I'll take this one. Although initially there's no sand available, so maybe I don't want to make sand available to people either. There's all sorts of resource denial that can come into play as you are taking resources from this cube. When you move, you move zero to two spaces and then you reveal anything that is face down. So perhaps I want to go over here and show these weapons, show those creatures, show these buildings, and this is now what's available to me in the future. So got an Enderman, hmm. got some desert building, and a couple of weapons, which in fact are the same thing, a crossbow. So that would end my turn. If you want to fight a creature, you must be adjacent to the creature and everything is diagonally adjacent in this game. You Start with five tiles that are called weapon tiles, even though in fact three of them are potatoes and are not weapons at all. You also have a wood sword that does one damage, a steel sword that does two damage, and on a turn when you attack a monster, you shuffle your weapon cards, you reveal three of them, and if you reveal enough hearts to match or exceed the total shown on that monster, then you defeat it. You might get an immediate reward, six points in this case, you might get an in-game bonus, this is two points for every forest biome you have on your board, but I don't even have six hearts in my deck, so I can't possibly defeat the Enderman. I could draft a weapon, and when you draft a weapon, you 
add it to your stack. You're gonna shuffle it in. This does two points of damage. And when you reveal a crossbow, you do one additional tile. You reveal one additional tile from your stack. Although of course now I have only five hearts, so I still can't even kill the Enderman. And this of course assumes I don't just reveal potatoes. I can take this on my turn, but I can't take a second weapon. I can move and show something else. So let's move two spaces, reveal these tiles as well to show you some more things that are here. And oh, on my next turn, I could build this for only one wood if I want to do that. No one else is adjacent to me. Even if they move up here, if they don't already have wood, they would have to spend a turn to collect wood and I'd be able to build this first. What you're trying to do is score points in Minecraft. You have three scoring phases during the game, the A, B, and C phase that are shown on the reminder cards here that I've kind of pushed out of shot. And when the first level of blocks are completely gone, you have the A scoring, where you look at your board, you look at the largest connected biome that you have. There are four types of environments, the mountain, tundra, desert, and forest. And you score points for them, three to six points as indicated on the reminder card. So initially, you start with eight points of forest that are connected together. That's the largest thing you have. As you acquire a card, so if I acquire this building on my turn, I can place it anywhere that I want. And if I do this, I now have four squares of forest that are connected, which will be worth 16 points during the A scoring. If I acquire this building as well, now I've got 20 points of forest and that can continue. So each time you build a building, then of course the next tile is face down. Someone else will have to move here or I can make a move of zero and then I will reveal these two tiles. So you're trying to build up for the A scoring, but you must keep in mind the B and C scoring. The B scoring takes place when the second level of blocks is completely gone. C when the third level is completely gone and then the game ends at that point except for the in-game scoring for any monsters you've collected. The B scoring relates to the material that these buildings are constructed with. So in this case, I've got a building made of sand or sandstone, I guess. Another one made of wood. So these will not score because I take the largest contiguous set of buildings that are of the same material and I score three to six points for them. Likewise, at the end of the game, I'm going to score for the type of structure that I have. And in this case, I've got animal enclosures. So this icon is here. Those are worth five points each. So I have 10 points of animal enclosures already connected. So you're trying to score the most you can in all three levels of play. That requires you to gather resources and be next to the buildings that you can take in order to score in a good way. I don't want to mess up these two. You can cover over buildings in order to replace them with something else. So maybe I score my forest now, and then I'm going to end up getting a uh, building that matches. Ooh, can't find anything. It's another forest. Everything's forest here. Get this sandstone structure, and I build up that on my board as well. And then on the third scoring, I'm gonna score for animals. So you're trying to have overlapping scorings that ideally everything scores in the best way. Some buildings are worth points when you acquire them because they require lots of resources or resources that are slightly harder to get. The obsidian has only 10 blocks in the stack, whereas the sand has 16. So two points for this when you build it, but it doesn't match anything that I'm building now. So it'd be worth two points for me and nothing else. You can earn points when you kill the monsters. You can collect monsters as well for the end game scoring. In addition, some monsters provide another type of bonus. Uh, these are both end game scoring. Other monsters, when you get them, will allow you to take an additional turn. So if I kill the spider, which only takes one heart, it should be easy, right? If I do that, I earn two points for killing the spider and then I keep this tile on the side and I can choose to spend it when I wish to take an additional action. And when I do that, I can choose whatever action I want, even one that I have already taken. So possibly you can store up blocks and have one big turn where you're building multiple things or fighting multiple things or taking lots of weapons to plan to fight in order to score lots of points that way. 
as well as with the end game points. Ooh, because this creeper will let me score three points for every animal enclosure I have. Try to put everything together to score the most points after that third level is complete because the game ends immediately after that scoring. And there's a quick run through of Minecraft Builders and Biomes, which I played twice on a review copy from Ravensburger both times with three players. You might think from the sound of it, it's a very standard game. And in many ways it is. You're collecting resources, you're building stuff, you're trying to get the most points. There you go. It has lots of Minecraft flavor to it in terms of the creatures that you're fighting, the buildings you're building, the weapons and tools that you have available. You can turn over pickaxes. So when you use a pickaxe as a weapon, you also get to take one additional block from the stack. And when you use a hoe, you get some extra points. And you have metal swords that are worth four hearts or do four points of damage. You also have TNT, five points of damage that you can use if you wish. So you can get the TNT, put it in your pile, and if you flip over enough to kill something without using it, then you get to keep it. Otherwise, bye-bye Enderman. So there's lots of feel that way. And then you have the taking of the resources as well. And just the overall look of the game just hits all the right marks. Uh, in my three-player game, I'd played with someone who was not familiar with Minecraft other than in passing, and someone who had actually played. There's lots of different levels and versions of Minecraft. This is all based on my understanding a bit from a distance as we had the Xbox version and mostly just played locally. We did not go online. There was no competition with other people. I see all sorts of different comments from people that don't jive with my understanding of Minecraft, but I think it's just because we had an Xbox version and we did certain things. And there is lots of other Minecraft experiences that you can have. So, the gameplay works on those two levels where if you don't know anything about Minecraft, you're just learning the vocabulary of it in terms of the mobs available to fight uh, certain other things in the game. If you are familiar, then it hits these certain resonant feels for what the thing is. It works like a standard game. Otherwise, whatever way you're, whatever your experience is with Minecraft, because a lot of it relates to the timing and the resource gathering, what you're trying to collect and what's available to you. You reveal things on the board. If you have the resources for them, great. If not, you have to collect them. But of course, you collecting them depends on them being available. Someone else not taking them first. Someone else coming over to buy the thing that you were going to buy because it fits perfectly with whatever they're building. It helps to know what's available in among the tiles, which we did not do. I don't. I generally I don't do a count and say how many desert tiles there are and how many tundra and all that type of thing. So it turned out that many of us were trying to collect bridges, which is the rarest type of structure, and there were very few available. So we kept digging and digging, and not find things, and sort of we had to go secondary path where okay. Clearly, that not enough bridges are available for all of us to do that. So we had this scarcity where they were either buried on the bottom or just not there because there's not that many of them. So then you have to adjust and make other plans, like many other games. It works out that way, uh, where I collected resources and tried to pile them all up so I could build multiple things at a time, but someone else stole them or they just weren't the right things that I was trying to collect for what I wanted to do. I had a building path that in theory could work because I grabbed an early bonus where I'd score for Tundra at the end of the game. So I wanted to specialize in that, but then if there's no Tundra, it just doesn't work out. So you have to go digging and hope to make that available, possibly building something to reveal, and then you can flip that over and eventually hope you find more Tundra. Possibly you don't because you have to worry as well about the timing of the removal of the blocks. That is not completely in your control you have some ability to adjust the timing, but it's mostly working towards when the scoring will take place. If I'm digging and taking only from the lower levels, I can extend the amount of time available to me for that first A scoring, but other people might want that to happen. They see what I'm building up for. They see, oh, this Tundra is available. Eric puts that together, that's another six points for him. And whoop, let's take the blocks off the top and we'll score before that can happen. So it's this interesting balance, everything works together, all in a traditional game that works for those familiar with Minecraft and not. So it seems like Robinsberger has sort of threaded that needle for what they're trying to do 
placing this game in front of a mainstream market, at least in the US, and attracting people who want to have that Minecraft experience with other people in the family. It's the Christmas gift for those Minecraft fans out there. So hope they enjoy it. They get that feel and they just explore modern games in general. If you like playing games, it works for you as well. So maybe you can bring different people to the table who might not have played with you otherwise. There you go. Quick overview of Minecraft Builders and Biomes.